Hi, my name is Manav. I'm the Chief Data Science Mentor at International School of AI and Data Science and this is episode 20 of Data Science and AI Weekly. If you're not subscribed to this podcast, just go to the subscribe button and subscribe it immediately so that you don't miss the next episode when that is going to get released and we release quite a few episodes on a weekly basis. So in this episode, we'll continue with our conversation with one of our star faculty at INSET, Deepesh Vadwani. So we were having a chat in the previous episode with Deepesh on his journey. Now we are going to take a turn and we are going to talk about getting prepared, getting you prepared for one of the machine learning tracks that he does, which is Machine Learning Foundation. So welcome Deepesh again to episode 20. Thank you so much for having me here. Uh, in maths itself, let's take logistic regression or linear regression or any other model. How much, so when you talk about all of these machine learning models on uh, from an intermediate level, you don't need to learn a lot of maths. But when you start getting into the assumptions, when you start getting into that, then you start seeing that there are a lot of terminologies itself that you have to get comfortable with, right? Then there are various curves that you need to know as you start proceeding further. So at some point, the student needs to know that to what extent does he need to go? So should he focus in that in-depth maths in the beginning or should he just, you know, take things as it is on the foundation level in terms of maths and focus on the real world application and think about getting deeper into mathematical concepts of data science at a later point of time? I personally prefer if students think about the worldly perspective of data science more than the math because for math, we are all there we will be able to math when it comes in a particular situation. So we'll be able to help them understand what the equation means. The one thing that will be with a student for life will be the logic that he develops. And that development will happen only if he thinks about how to apply that algorithm in his own business sense. So let's say a person is working in IT or a person is in bank. So if an algorithm can be adapted for the domain the student is in, job well done. That's the objective. Right. We all need to get inspired. Everybody else would be using a particular algorithm in some particular context. If we can adapt the same in our domain, we actually created something new in a positive direction. Right. So essentially, just to summarize what you're saying is that focusing on the real world application is more important than getting lost in the math jungle itself. Correct. Right. Okay. So that's the first challenge uh, that you spoke about. The second challenge is the various, our students come from various industries. Our students come from various industry domains and they come from experience all the way from their software engineer, solution architect, their directors, vice presidents, and people from programming backgrounds, non-programming backgrounds as well, right? So when people are coming from so many different backgrounds, what is one thing that you think everybody needs to keep in mind when they're learning machine learning? Because when they start learning machine learning, essentially the honeymoon is over because the honeymoon Correct. was in the data analysis part. Correct. Machine learning that brings them to the reality. Correct. Yeah. So the one thing that I suggest everybody doing, no matter where we come from, no matter if we have one year of experience, 10 years of experience or 25 years of experience, at least during the machine learning course, we must do some hands-on. Until we get in, swim in the data that we have, we'll not be able to get that intuitive or friendly feeling from data when a new data point comes in. So again, I understand somebody who has just one year of experience or is a fresher might want, or somebody who is 25, 30 years of experience, might want to run a company that does data science. Nevertheless, both of them will need to know how good or bad a particular algorithm is. Will that be applicable in my domain or not? Or should I not use data science at all? A particular problem can be solved better with heuristics. So we'll not be able to judge this until we solve a few problems at least ourselves. It's fantastic. And this is what even I emphasize a lot that what is important is that these are what you call the core skills. So no matter the application, the core skills is something that you need to master, no matter whether you want to become the head of a data science practice or whether you want to become a junior data scientist. Correct. Right. Definitely. Yeah. So now let's talk about programming because programming, a lot of students that we get 40% of the students are from non-programming background. They are from IT backgrounds, but they are not possibly working on programming on a day-to-day -day basis. 
So what level of programming is required in machine learning? And if you can right. give some also through some of the libraries, then that would help people understand, newbies understand that what is right. the actual level, if you can give a more realistic picture, that would be right. great. But before I answer that question, let me take an example here. Have you used the calculator before? Yes. A scientific calculator, something which has yes. a lot of buttons During on it. engineering college. During engineering college. Everything on the scientific calculator you used? Absolutely not. No, right? Yeah. So that's what Python is. Python does everything left, right and center. We are using basic calculations out of it. So the first thing which I tell during I start machine learning track is even if you know a lot of programming, it's not a lot of benefit here because we'll be using very few commands. We'll be using libraries which are already pre-built. So everything that we study, we let's say spend two hours in particular session. So everything we study in a two hour is part of just three line of code. So all we are trying to do is see the logic of how this code work in the background. And yes, it will. this should be done. That's it. So you give the few names, the libraries, pandas, sklearn, numpy, scipy, all of these libraries do basic computations. They build one on another and ultimately sklearn, it created the complete algorithm in the background. All we need to do is write, write, write a three liner code to run an algorithm. So I am a mechanical engineer. I used to hate programming. I still got into data science. It's actually fun. Fantastic. So I think you will be a lot of inspiration to a lot of uh, mechanical engineers, civil engineers, electrical engineers, and, and possibly for people like me as well. I come from electronics engineering background, and I concur there totally with you that programming is nothing but logic, right? And especially Python as a programming language, the way I say it, it's simple logic. Right. Uh, so Python is helping you do things in a simple way. Right. Now we spoke about maths. Uh, we spoke about programming. Now, one of the questions I have is that when people are undergoing a data science program, and this is going to be a wrap up question before we do the next episode from a programming point of view, how much practice is required beyond the classes that they are attending on Saturdays and Sundays on the weekends with you during the week? Right. And uh, what schedule do you recommend to people from to master programming? So this goes for both programming and machine learning as we move forward in the curriculum. But let's say we have four hour session on the weekend. I recommend four hours during the week as well. This does not is just programming. Have a revision session, make notes during sessions, read those through. Think about where you can apply in your own business domain. And of course, we have a programming a demonstration in the class. Try to replicate that on some other data set. We have a very beautiful collection of data sets and from domain ranging from banking to mechanical engineering to healthcare to even the one which we can use on neural networks. So MNES data set, all of those are available with us. It's, it's available online. There are a lot of repositories. We can choose data set from our own domain and practice. That will take roughly half an hour, 45 minutes, maybe an hour in starting. As we move forward, as we realize that data science is a very structured, it's like Tetris. We have to just arrange the right block at the right position. And those blocks we already have pre-built. We have those in our Jupyter notebooks. All we need to do is make sure the right block goes in the right sequence. Fantastic. So that was Deepesh Vadwani, star faculty at INSED. And what Deepesh has to say is that if you're using, if you are motivated, if you are asking the right questions and if you're using logic, uh, programming should not be a hindrance and possibly he himself epitomizes it the most because he is a mechanical engineer himself. So this was episode 20 of Data Science and AI Weekly. I am in chat with Deepesh Vadwani and we will be back with another episode, episode 21st of Data Science and AI Weekly in which I'm going to continue my conversation with Deepesh and ask him a few more questions that I would personally want to ask him on your behalf. Thank you very much for tuning in and uh, see you in episode 21. Thanks for tuning in. This is Manav. I'm signing off. I'm signing off.